guys, welcome to my second vid. Today I'm gonna to be doing a guide on how to buy the best leather jacket based off of fit, quality, and personal taste. So, enjoy. So basically, one of the first things you should remember when buying a leather jacket is no matter how much you pay, it should fit perfect. It should fit tapered sleeves, the body should be fitted pretty, pretty tightly, um, and you should never buy a leather jacket loose because as you wear it, normally it's gonna give give out to the width of your body and it's gonna stretch out and you don't want something looking pretty like sloppy and gross after a while so you should always try to size down or try to get something pretty snug because in the long run it's gonna be worth it so the first leather jacket that i'll talk about is my saint laurent l17 which is the classic perfecto cut of a leather jacket um i typically like i said in my last video typically wear a large to extra large and Saint Laurent runs pretty slim. So I went with a size 56 and I was a little bit heavier at the time, but because of how small these jackets run, it still fits pretty good. Not as tapered in the arms as I'd like, but it's still pretty slim fitting and I'd be able to like have this jacket for hopefully my lifetime. I'm hoping with the amount of money I spent on this piece, but it fits great. So quality of the Saint Laurent leather jacket is pretty amazing. Um, all the hardware on it is pretty heavy duty. The zippers are pretty solid. Um, tons and tons of little inside pockets, space you could like store your wallet, your phone, keys. If you want to toss like your keys inside of this big pocket in here i've even put like sometimes when i would go to school in it i'd put like one of my books in there small notebook so i don't have to carry a big book bag on my way to class um um what else show the back some of the little details it has here it also has like for like that super old school look it has some like drawstrings at the bottom, like little suede tassels, which I thought were pretty cool. So next I'm gonna talk about the second leather jacket I have, which is the Burberry Brit Quilted Biker Jacket. Um, so this one's a bit cheaper than the Saint Laurent L17. Still pretty pricey, it's about 1900 and then with tax, like roughly 2000 and change. But another great piece to have and definitely has quality hardware all over the jacket um this is the second rendition of this biker jacket the first one was made by burberry porsum a few years earlier but i was pretty broke when that one came out so i couldn't afford it and then this one came out and it was a little bit cheaper so i was able to get it the fit of this jacket is pretty weird um still a crop fit which is what i like but i had to size up and get the extra large in this one other than my typical size large just because um the design of this jacket was to be extremely cropped and i didn't want to be walking around with like a crop top jacket or anything like that i like it like i said before to fit at uh, around my waist to like end right there um so i got the extra large in this one and this is how it fits all right so just like the saint laurent the hard round this jacket is pretty pretty insane i think this one's a little bit more um they really went all off with this jacket it's just like ridiculously heavy because of all the hardware but definitely an amazing piece i wear it a shit ton um quilting panels the quilted panels on it are ridiculous um tons and tons of pockets so if you want to just like store Anything in here, phone, wallet, yeah, zipper pockets over here, a couple pockets over here, but just like overall craftsmanship of this jacket is pretty, pretty good. So last but not least is this vintage shot cafe moto leather jacket that I picked up about three weeks ago. Um, other than the other two, which are both lamb leather and tend to be a little bit softer and a little bit thinner, 
This one is calf leather, which is a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker. Um, and this one I only paid $200 for at L Train Vintage. Put that back there. And the difference with calf leather to lamb leather is that it takes a little bit longer to break in and it's a little bit thicker. So you definitely feel the weight. So the difference between vintage leather jackets and modern leather jackets is, in my opinion, it's a little bit harder finding the right size. Um, I got kind of lucky and this is a size 38 and I know I'm definitely not a size 38, but it fits like a glove and it's probably like one of my better fitting leather jackets out of all three of them. Um, so I don't really typically recommend buying a leather jacket just because sometimes the arms are pretty like baggy and loose and it's hard to just find the perfect vintage leather. Um, I kind of got super lucky with this one and hit it on the head and found one that literally fit the way I like, like slimmer sleeves, bodies touching like around my belt, like I said before, um, and it's not it's not bad quality at all. Like the leather quality on this, it's a shot jacket, but for, I'm pretty sure this is from the 80s. So for a over 30 year old leather jacket, quality is amazing still. Leather's held up pretty good. Like it has a couple little rips and tears and shit, but it still looks like badass and dope. So that's one thing to remember with leather jackets. So to start with the quality of the jacket, for an over 30 year old leather jacket the quality on this vintage shot cafe is pretty amazing um the zippers have held up for i guess the over 30 years and never broke off and it looks like this may be where saint laurent got inspired for their zippers because they're pretty heavy duty and have the same like dip if you know what i mean that saint laurent zippers have so might be where they got inspired, Mr. Hedy Slimane. The other thing that I think is pretty dope on this biker is the fact that even my Burberry one doesn't have a silk lining. And this biker actually does have a silk lining, which I love. It keeps me nice and cool when I'm wearing it. Um, like I said before, the quality of the leather is pretty amazing. And even though it's a calf leather jacket, it's broken in like perfect. And it's starting to get nice and buttery again since I'm wearing it every weekend when I go out. Um, I'll show you the back of the jacket so you can see. And for the amount of time that it's been out, this jacket's like hardware is held up and hasn't broken off. So I think that that's pretty dope. And price point on this was roughly like 230 after tax which is cheaper than buying one straight from shot now and the patina and everything on this biker i think looks way better than buying one brand new so definitely probably like the biggest come up i've got from l train vintage so check them out and try to find you one so hopefully you guys got a lot of good information on how to go about buying your own personal leather jackets um, remember to keep fit in mind and that is honestly the key and then quality quality too but with any jacket no matter how much you pay the fit should always be perfect no matter if you pay ten dollars for it at a flea market or if you spend five grand for it the fit is key so keep that in mind and hopefully this video taught you a lot um, remember to like comment and subscribe and follow me on ig uh at area rosado 29 you did. I talk gray, I don't keep it white and black. Only say I love you just so.